it's, um, it's meant to be as an introduction to um, the teacher training course for those of you that are interested, not that you have to be interested in doing that to be here. So uh, I'm also going to be sharing some of my um, methods, if you like, and it will help, hopefully it will help make sense of the practice. Um, it is a cognitive practice, I, I believe yoga is, and it's, a, it's about um, being present, not repeating something mindlessly, the teacher says. Um, that's not, that Simon says, which is fun, um, but not necessarily yoga. The uh, basic principle being, I think, if you can turn up to what you're doing, then, um, which is harder, easier said than done, isn't it? For those of you, <laughs> everyone on my course is going, yeah. yeah. Um, it's easier said than done, because uh, basically we are habitual creatures, that's our kind of function. It's the function of the brain, anyway, is to become habitual, because otherwise you have to go around being conscious all the time, which is exhausting. Um, so, in order to... Um, practice your yoga, my, my, my basic, basic idea is you turn up, uh, become present to what you're doing, and then in the process you can, you'll witness and you'll see that there's stuff that's not necessarily working as it could. And in principle, you don't need to work it out. You just turn up. According to Mr. Patanjali and other sources of yoga, um, it's just about being present. And in the presence to it, um, obvious solutions arise. Um, sounds unlikely, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but I, I think it's a, it's a pretty obvious principle when you apply it to someone else. You know, if, if you're working with someone else, uh, or if, if someone comes to you, a friend, in need, in difficulty, uh, they are in the mire of their confusion and pain and difficulty. Uh, from the outside, the solution's obvious. Leave the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but from within their experience, it's really complicated. Yeah? <laughs> um, the advantage you have, um, the advantage you have over, uh, over their uh, position in, the, in relationship to their life is you have objectivity. And um, if you if you want to um, solve your own physical issues. Um, there's nothing to, there's nothing new to learn actually. This is, this is the big mistake, this is the big arrogance that we have as human beings. Is we, we think we can impose and learn new things that are better than nature. Uh, we've already done that. That's what's causing the problems. Um, the, the job is to uh, become present. Become present and then um, in that presence you recognise the imposition. You recognise the, the um, the thing you've, you've, you've placed in yourself through some external voice, some, some history, some, something that's happened in the past that you're still reacting to or responding to, or something you've learned, something, something somebody's told you to do, and you've taken it on as an idea. All of this stuff. You, um, in principle, this Scarabelli-inspired approach, which I don't think is any different from... Uh, I, don't, I just think it's yoga. It's just um, this woman seems to have tapped into something. And uh, she certainly inspired me and many others to look at yoga from a very direct, personal, felt sense, present perspective. And uh, in the process, things change. Um, lovely idea. Um, practice of it, much harder to actually put into practice than, than uh, perhaps the idea is, because we, we do things, we feel difficulty, we react, we're in the loop. So uh, <clears throat> uh, my job as teacher is to give you some hints, some uh, reminders of ways of engaging with what you are doing that might bring on the nature again. And um, in its arrival, you may perhaps recognise it. And in the recognition, you can go for it. Does that make any sense to anyone? Yeah. It's a totally different approach to yoga practice. Um, yes, there's the, you put your left big toe there and your right nostril here. There's all that. Um, because you, you need a framework to work with it. Um, but the, the point is to find simplicity, wholeness, integration, absence of conflict. That is a big one. 
Um, <laughs> we all know it in principle. That I see people beating themselves up when they're trying to do postures. In order to do the posture. That's not yoga. Uh, the, the yoga is the integration, the simplicity, the wholeness, the absence of conflict. Um, the postures are there to uh, challenge you, I guess, to find it. Not to achieve the posture. Pointless. Pointless thing to do. You can do that, you do that all day, every day. You achieve being upright, you achieve carrying the shopping around. You find a way. Is it the most ergonomic, the most satisfactory, the most light way you can do it? Probably not. Because you've got 10 minutes before the kids come home or whatever. Yeah? But uh, yoga practice is an opportunity to um, explore how you do things with a sense of undoing all the habits, so you have to become present, you have to turn up, um, with a few basic we need some sort of framework, apart from the postures. Um, because postures, postures themselves don't do it. And I, I think the, the, the basic framework has is, is got to be principle-based. Um, and the princi uh, this, this is the bottom line principle, I think, as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Um, number one, if you, if you want to be as relaxed as possible, you need to be supported by your structure. It's uh, obvious, yeah, 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 sure. Um, but actually practice with that, because um, it means something from other than what you understand. Uh, not because I know any better than you, it's because we have ideas that are sort of fixed, fixed mental impressions. Guarantee, most of you understand structural support as what you need to do to support your structure which is not the same as structural support. If you put a tripod on the ground, you don't see it sort of being all tense around its joints to try and keep it in position. It has structural support. Um, it's not alive, so it doesn't appreciate the fact. But uh, you are. If you, uh, is, and obviously it's more complicated than the tripod. Quite a bit more complicated. 360 pounds, work it out. But uh, if, you're, if you're listening to the noise and the muscles and the tension and, you know, should I be feeling it here? Should this muscle be tense there? Um, is this right? You're, you're, you're in the complication of a dog chasing its own tail. What you need to tune into is, am I supported by my structure? As in, can I let go and in that release, do I stay supported in what I am doing? The answer is no. So you change something. That, that's your adjustment. Okay? Structural support. Um, because I've been racking my brains for 22 years trying to work out what we can actually be objective about. And bones and structural support is one of them. Um, and then the how to, how do we feel this stuff? Um, yeah, how do we feel, well, am I supposed to feel it here? Ah, oh, um, that's going to confuse the hell out of you. Um, but the thing that is useful is, is to uh, also understand that the, on top of structural support, um, the other thing that this means is that when you receive the breath, when the breath comes in, there's nothing that you are doing to um, interfere with that from your structural support. So structural support doesn't mean you can't breathe in, nor does it mean you can't let the breath go fully. So I need to be able to breathe what I am doing. Now that doesn't mean I want to breathe in so I inhale, and I want to breathe out, so I exhale. You haven't got a posture. What you've got is an oscillation between two states. Inhale, exhale. And actually, most yoga is taught in this way. You haven't got a state where the body is supported, so you have to move between postures in order to breathe. Um, how on earth are you going to find stillness with that? Is it, I, I'm not against it at all, by, by any means. So you, you need to be able to go into the fullness, a full expression of how the body wants to um, breathe. Um, it's just, it's kind of prescribed as you, you must inhale up and you must exhale down. That's going to fix you in, into a way of being that means I breathe in and I come up and I breathe out and I have to collapse. Um, which is fine, it's normal, you know, so that's right, that goes. You keep doing that and then you know, have a nice life, you've done some yoga, and you die. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
this, this yoga stuff is, 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 is a bit bigger than that. It's, it's about escaping that, that loop. It's escaping the, finding a way out of that karmic wheel. You know? Um, you can extrapolate it as much as you like, depending on how much that yoga you've read. Um, and this is where I think this approach to yoga is, is more in keeping with the original intent. Um, the Scaravelli inspired approach says something different. Um, it says, I relax and uh, the breath supports me, yes, it's by all means, in what I'm doing. Um, but here's the, here's the radical thing, I relax, I let go of tension into the earth. And as a natural response to that, I fly away from the ground. I get taller, thinner, stronger through a release of tension. Now that, that's, a, that's radical. It's not how we experience things. But it is physiologically possible. And, it, and it's dependent. And uh, you know, I've also racked my brains on how to explain this stuff. Because uh, the normal, the Western way of understanding things is about pulleys and levers and this muscle against that muscle. Tension, um, balance of tensions between elastic straps. And if you're thinking of the body in those terms, that's what you've got. You've got I inhale up, I exhale down. Come in. Is there someone come? Oh no, it's not for us. Okay. Um, so, uh, in looking at how on earth can this be true, because uh, you know you experience it, you go to a good hi there. Come in. You go to a, a good teacher. It doesn't have to be scary veins, but if you go to any good yoga teacher that knows their onions, you come out, you feel lighter, or you get a moment within the posture where um, within what you're doing, where something different occurs. It, may, it might be in meditation. You, you suddenly become light. Um, uh, uh, yeah, front space, there is, there's an and uh, this is the this this is the, this phenomenon of becoming lighter as you release tension, becoming taller, and, and the the answer is how does this work? It's, it's the fluid body. We, we are working with fluid mechanics, not with pulleys and levers. You know, if you, if you think of a human-shaped balloon full of fluid with some bones floating around. Um, if you take hold of it in the middle and squeeze it, what's it going to do? It's going to expand. Yeah? That action um, is what happens when air leaves the body. So a totally different way of looking at the body. Uh, the, and then all the musculature, all the pulleys and levers stuff, um, is related to that action. So instead of it being, I lift, I drop, um, it becomes, I collect in towards my centre and I move out in all directions. Um, uh, squeezing the human starfish. Um, uh, instead of reaching out there, you stay in your centre and you reach out in all directions. So you become, it, it makes, it's, it, it's a different way of engaging. But it's not about you using one set of muscles to stretch another. And because you're, um, because you're working with a different um, physical model, if you like, your body responds differently. So you build different musculature, you build a different way of being that leads to the experience of I release tension and I go grow taller and stronger. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I feel like I've, I'm about to lose you all so, because I'm talking too much. But uh, have you got the sort of general gist? Uh, I'll say you just uh, I recognise you, what's your name? Anne. Anne. Oh, yes, yes. That's right, yeah. Um, I've just done a sort of little explanation of where I'm coming from. So what is it? Uh, Non-conflict, um, turn up, be present to what you're doing, not repeat what you know. Um, every time, every time, every time you come to the mat, every time you intend to practice yoga, you become present to what is, not what you think you should be able to do, um, or anything else. You, uh, it, the less you know, the better, because the more you can learn. Okay? So turn up, become present. Um, and this, this other way of looking at things is part of that turning up. Because that, that picture of the body as a pulleys and lever thing is, is an imposition that, that has arrived somehow culturally um, because we believe in anatomy or something, I don't know. Yeah? It's, so this idea of working with a fluid body is just an alternative way of looking at things that will ha perhaps redress that misunderstanding. That I have to lift and I have to drop. I have to stretch this and I have to pull that. So um, if you're suitably confused, we can start doing some yoga. Yeah? Good. Okay, 
So uh, we'll start with something very simple. I think I think um, lying down is about as complicated as we can get to start with. But uh, I'd like you to lie down with your feet on the floor and your hands up in the air like this. <sighs> so the, the feet will be underneath the knees. Um, do you, have you got some props there? Have you got the props you need? Yeah. Feet roughly underneath the uh, footprints 